Hi everyone, Tanya Hertz here. We're gonna be talking today about how to create a pitch deck presentation with uh, a very short amount of time and what you should include in your, in your presentation. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my slides here, share my screen. And we'll start by just diving right into it. So one to five minute pitch deck presentation. We know that as entrepreneurs, we should have many different pitches at our disposal in our pocket when, uh, when needed. Just yesterday, I was talking with angel investors and they were asking me, for, for your students in your incubator, do we have recordings of all of their pitches? Do you have their uh, abbreviated pitch decks? Do we have elevator pitches? And, and I could say, yes, we do. We, we have them and this is where they're located and all of us should be able to say that. So one line, <clears throat> excuse me, one line, one breath elevator pitches, usually those are done face to face. The 30 second elevator pitches, they could be recorded and you might wanna think about recording them. What we're doing right now is a, it's a formal pitch deck, but it's an abbreviated formal pitch deck. So it's um, essentially our two minute pitch. We have uh, parameters for this that I'm giving you for, for, for this assignment. Different uh, assignments will have different parameters. We're just gonna keep this under five minutes. So one to five minutes is, is a good rule of thumb. Every pitch, whether it's the 30 second, the, the formal pitch deck, uh, this shortened abbreviated pitch deck, must answer these questions. Why you? Why this? Why now? Why you? By that we mean, why are you the right people to start this this business? Why are you the right person or people? Um, what makes what makes it what makes it that you rather than someone else have the the necessary knowledge, uh, experience, uh, abilities, personality, passion, skills? to start this company. That's what we need to share. Uh, you can also share if you are lacking in something and it's pretty obvious, this is a good time to kind of slide in there. Um, one of the amazing mentors that you have or any team that you have that can kind of bolster you. Why this is, why is this the right problem to solve right now? Um, <clears throat> how much money is it going to make? You know, what, um, what, what is the actual solution? What are you actually solving? And, uh, the, the finally why now is uh, probably of all of the variables out there, the most critical. Why is this the right time in history to actually be launching this business? Why is timing telling you that now is when you should launch? Uh, I'll, I'll give just a, a quick example. When, uh, when, when Uber, was was started <clears throat> there were other uh, there were other models that tried to do the same thing when airbnb was started there were other companies that tried to start just identical airbnb models just didn't work until we were in that right place in history when uh, the economy was in the toilet and people were willing to rent out their rooms to strangers <clears throat> so um you'll want to share that why 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 now component and the way that we <clears throat> that we share all this as we share um, how we're going to reach our first early adopters, our, our initial target market. Uh, and so that means we're taking a focused strategy to entrepreneurship. And if you want to be successful, you take a focused strategy. You start small to grow big. The best businesses to start are the ones where you can find a model that you can start making money tomorrow, right? That might mean selling on Etsy rather than creating your own uh, unique store or selling online, whereas eventually you might want to sell um, in a storefront or uh, in any way using somebody else's stuff to, to make it happen right now. We know that your plan is to grow big, but there are, there are riches and niches is that uh, fa favorite saying in entrepreneurship, the rich and the niche. Uh, we want to find that unique user that we can come in there, we can be uh, experts, we can, we can dominate that corner of the market while still being ignored from the competition and the big guys because it's so small, um, and then eventually grow very big. So don't think that when I'm always encouraging you to, to, to narrow that initial focus that I'm trying to make you think small, I want you to think big. I want you all to be starting uh, gazelle companies, really high growth companies, but eventually. So you do need to include your business model. This confuses people because we have very similar terms in entrepreneurship. There's the business model canvas. There's the business model project. There's um, various, very similar terms. But what we're talking about with when we're saying business model, we're talking about a very standard uh, 
system that we use to express a lot with a very little, uh, very few words. Uh, there are common standardized, <clears throat> excuse me, business models. And you've heard them said before, uh, when somebody says, what's your business model? What they're really saying is, how are you, how are you making money with this business idea? What, what, what strategy are you using uh, to, to earn money? Uh, are you, are you using a, a strategy of, of, uh, direct sales? Are you using a strategy of um, a freemium where, where you are giving away your offering for free and then charging for premium services or whatever it is? And that's, um, that's really important that you include those common business models. If you follow this link here, it will take you to those common, uh, to an article that uh, has 50 or so of the, 50 exactly, of the uh, common standard uh, strategies. I liked this article because it gives you the the standardized strategies and then companies that are using the strategy as an example. So are you using a franchise model, right? Like McDonald's, are you using a multi-sided platform like Uber, or like LinkedIn, like Freelancer, cash machine business, uh, like Amazon, uh, freemium, like I was saying, like, like Zoom, MailChimp, and so many others. When I say this, uh, those three words or I could say it in one word, I'm using a freemium model. That tells me so many things about the business in such a short amount of time, so you have to include that. All right, so let's get into what else you need to include in your presentation. You also need to include uh, information about why you are uh, why you are a, a gazelle or how you are a gazelle, how you're going to, to, to grow rapidly. And uh, again, this is another term that we use. We love to use animals as examples in entrepreneurship. A gazelle is a young or new company not that the people in it are, are necessarily young, but that the company is young. You have a high growth, a high value, a million dollars in, um, in ARR or re revenue in the first four years, um, and that you have 20% annual growth in the first four years. And, and we're all trying to get here. The, the ideas that you pitch, try to pitch ideas that are gazelle type ideas. Um, if you're not there yet, I'll help you get there. But Many of the many students of mine, these are previous students who have gazelles um, uh, right now that are worth a lot of money. Ryan Vancher, uh, his company, 40 million, him and, and Luke. So um, your best ideas tend to be scalable. They solve very, very clear, um, well-defined problems. You can become an expert in that niche that you've found. Uh, you can, uh, you can take advantage of what's happening right now in the world around you. Like I said, trends are so important. All of these things make, uh, make it more likely that you'll be successful and more likely that you've actually found a gazelle. You should be, you should be uh, selling vitamins, not vitamins, I'm sorry. You should be selling painkillers, not vitamins. You should be selling um, a solution to a problem, a clear defined problem that people are having right this moment uh, and to, explain that and one one of the many silly uh, sayings that we have in entrepreneurship if i have a headache i'm going to pay for an aspirin right this moment a vitamin is a harder sell so see that you're selling vitamins and not um or, sorry uh, painkillers not vitamins here are slides on how to actually give your presentation before you record your pitch deck i really want all of you to watch these presentations there's five these five videos uh very clear, simple directions on how to give a, a presentation in such a way that you keep people engaged, entertained, and um, watching your, 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 your pitch. Um, I'm not going to. Writing's not that I easy. Say, I'm not going to wait for Grammarly commercial. can help. You get the idea. You click on that, watch these five videos, uh, but definitely watch them before you record your pitch deck. Make sure that when you are uh, we're recording your pitch deck. There's you, right? We need you, your face in the in the um, in the recording, but we also need something else to look at. We don't want it to look like this, though. We don't want all of these words. We want pictures, not words. People cannot read and think and listen simultaneously, right? We can we can do one or the other. So don't make people have to choose whether to look at you or to look at your your slides. Give them. Show them what to look at. Show them uh, a picture and then support it with, with words. Your presentation is not what's on your slides. It's not what's um, in your research. It's not your PowerPoint. It's not anything other than you up here talking. And so make sure that you do it right. So a standard pitch deck has uh, 10 slides. This is industry standard. Uh, 
but we're not going to necessarily be able to cover all 10 slides in a short pitch deck presentation. Just recently, the uh, the incubator at the at Miramar, the, our recondivation lab, we went to uh, start up San Diego's Convergence Week, and we were uh, six of the of the 12 companies that presented were from Miramar, from the rec. So we're really proud that we dominated that that pitch deck presentation. And um, we had to start with, we had a minute and a half, I think. I think it was 90 seconds. And you needed to get everything out in, in 90 seconds or they would cut you off. And uh, because the, the because the teams were so well practiced, had rehearsed, had, had gone through and, and really knew what they were doing, none of them were cut off by the buzzer and all of them um, did a great job. In fact, after that, I was approached by several angel investors and investment clubs that were um, wanting to give money to support those teams and hopefully, um, you know, there were self serving means in there too, they thinking that they'll get rich with this. But uh, so you don't have to necessarily include all 10 of these. In fact, it's almost impossible to do that. Um, so what do you include? Well, remember the why you, the why this, the why now. And that might mean about half of those of those slides. Um, you'll want to start with uh, your introduction. You want, you want to, within a couple of seconds of starting, uh, tell people what it is that you're selling. I've seen plenty of presentations that we get all the way through the presentation, and I still don't know what the heck they're talking about at the very end. So within a couple of sentences, make sure that you say your name, uh, your first and last name, and if there are any team members presenting with you, um, the name of the business, the business model, right? Your one sentence description of the business, your one line elevator pitch goes here. Now your one line elevator pitch is, it's not your your sales pitch, it's not a tag pitch, it's a, it's a one line, using regular human words <laughs> of describing your business, right? Describing your business. Don't use complicated jargon that nobody understands. Use words that people understand. Uh, uh, then you'll wanna have a slide uh, or section on your team. Uh, these are the people behind the business. Uh, this is also, you don't wanna just say like, my name is Tanya, I'm the CEO. Then a uh, part of my team is Angela Merkins. She's the CFO and Crystal Burns. She's the CTO. Why? What does that tell us? Okay, so there's a C-suite, great. Um, why? So I'm the CEO because I've started several companies and uh, and have the experience of launching startups. I've, I've uh, I've been the CEO of other successful companies. Uh, Angela is the, I said, what, CFO? Angela's a CFO because she has an advanced degree in, in, um, in finance. Uh, Crystal's the CTO because technology is her life. She knows, uh, she knows technology front and back, whatever, right? You get it. So uh, describe the keeps and how they're aligning with each position. Uh, the keeps, again, are the knowledge, the experience, the education, the personality and passion and skills, right? What problems do you solve? People buy solutions to problems. That's They don't buy products, they don't buy services, they buy solution to problems. And so tell them how you're solving a problem. Problems are more, um, this section, uh, but problems are more likely to, to, to resonate when they are told in story format. By that, I don't mean, and I've seriously heard this once upon a time, the more I'm talking about, I'm talking about, do you or someone you know have that problem? Then tell us then tell us that. I experienced this problem myself. Uh, I, I, I'm starting a company that uh, makes slippers that are doubled from as insoles and uh, can be worn by people who have, you know, who, who have jobs where they're high power jobs, where they are on their feet all day and then want to change their shoes. Uh, and this gives them a way to do that without having to carry bags or something like this. Right? But if you tell like a story, it's better. If you say, I work in a job that I'm on my feet all day and we found a solution to this, that's better. Or um, even better is if you can share a story that, that really re resonates with them. Um, don't make it up, but make it uh, personalized. All right, so then you tell your solution. Obviously, it can be separate slides, or it can go um, together in your short ones. And then always make sure that you're 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 including your value prop. So the the value prop was that why does the customer care, right? So why are they finding value? What are you proposing is the value value prop? Um, is it a big problem or is it a nuisance? Is it a vitamin or is it aspirin? Why is it important? How is it going to affect people's lives? Um, 
this is where you might want to include uh, any trends that you are that you're um, capitalizing on or or exploiting. Uh, also, this might be a good time for you to include your sort of um, you, investors call it the secret sauce. Everybody has their own term for this section for the value prop. Your your um, your differential advantage, your unique selling proposition, your sustainable competitive advantage. Uh, basically what makes you unique? What makes it so that you're selling something that not everybody else is selling, you're selling it in a different way. Not price, price is not ever a, a, a competitive advantage when it comes to um, entrepreneurial firms. And why is that? I think most of us know that the big existing companies can beat us on price almost always. You know, they can win any price war. All right, the rest of the slides uh, are optional. So I'll include, or the rest of the sections and slides, uh, you don't necessarily need to include, but if you have time, include them. Um, again, leave them wanting more, not wishing you would stop talking. You only have five minutes, so keep it to the point. Um, so these six, the, the rest of these sections, six to 10 in the 10 common slides, um, again, are optional, include as many as you can, um, including the, the, the market size and the financials. Uh, the reason I say this is optional is because, uh, well, for, for like for this uh, particular pro project, you probably don't have any, any numbers. Uh, you haven't, uh, you haven't gone through and actually evaluated the numbers. And so you don't want to make anything up. Everything that you want to include needs to be validated. And so if you don't know it yet, you might not include it. If they say they want it though, you put it in. Okay. Um, when you are including financials, use simple direct language. Don't put whole financial projections. Pull out what is uh, what is relevant and um, and and leave away the rest. Right. Always less is more. Uh, they might look for. Oh, sorry. They might. Um, if you're including the financials, they might ask you things like, "What what's your EOU? Um, when do you expect to be profitable?" What they're asking is. Uh, you know how much do, how much money do you make on one unit? What are the economics of one unit of whatever you're selling? And keep it narrow at, at first. Again, riches and niches. Keep it very focused. Uh, your your MVP, your technology, your uh, service. If you have it, show it. Do not make your your whole pitch deck uh, about your MVP. But um, I see that usually novice entrepreneurs do this all the time. Spend the entire time talking about my my app, and then you go to this page and it does this, and you go to this page, or you go this way. No, that's not the time for this. That's a, a totally different presentation and not your, your pitch deck presentation or your um, elevator pitch. But if you do have it, now's a good time to show it. Competition. Of all of the additional slides, this is the most important to include. And I would recommend trying to find a way to squeeze that in. List the direct competitors, what makes you different from those competitors. Um, if you have any proprietary features, if there's any intellectual property protection, put that in there. Any, um, anything that's inimitable that they can't cop, other people can't copy, put them in. Um, you probably, uh, oh, sorry, let me go forward and I'll come back. Uh, you, you probably can include a, a slide like this uh, to, to get the information across quickly and it doesn't take a lot of extra time. And so this would be like, for example, if your company was Google, right? You're showing what you have versus what all of the other uh, companies have. And th this is just a really clear, easy way to say, look at all the things that we do. And they only do a few of them, right? So back again, it, when you have that, uh, when you do have the MVP, it, you don't need to include, you know, it doesn't have to be functional. It doesn't have to be real. It can just be something that shows what you do, um, including a pretendo type. We call them pretendo types because it's not really a prototype yet because it doesn't exist. Uh, the example I use is uh, back when IBM was, was testing talk to text in the 1990s, talk to text didn't exist and they did not spend the time creating it and then finding a way to sell it because that's old fashioned and not the way we do entrepreneurship. Instead, they first found out if people want it and then they built it, right? So, but to do that, they had to pretend like it existed. So they made a pretendo type. They had one person in a room and she was talking to a microphone saying, uh, whatever it is that she wanted to to say to type and we told her and so she thought that it was going into a server and then it would come out on the screen in front of her so she was saying I love Professor Hertz's entrepreneurship class see she says that right here <laughs> and then um uh, so what she thought was happening was the server was typing what she was saying but what was really happening is she was talking and this guy is in the back room typing furtively uh, as she's talking and so it shows up on her screen and that was how they tested talk to text and uh yeah and obviously people wanted it so then they made it 
don't uh, include the MVP if you don't have it. Don't worry if you don't have it. And don't spend any more time and effort on your MVP than absolutely necessary because every extra second that you spend is wasted time, number one, perhaps. And number two, it's your ideas before you test them. And so you're more likely to then just keep doing what you think is wanted and not what the customer thinks. And it's hard to throw away hundreds of hours worth of work that you've done making your MVP pretty or work when, um, when people tell you that's not what I wanted. And so you're less likely to, to, to actually dive in and do it. There's slides uh, we have on this. There's a whole presentation on this. Um, you're welcome to look into it if you like, but we're not gonna talk about it more here. Um, and then uh, for, for marketing, I would encourage you to include at least a little because all of us need to market heavily prior to actually launching and create ourselves, um, you know, create our brand image online before we ever get there. So you want to share like what social media marketing channels you already have. Tell us that your website is, tell us um, any efforts that you have and success that you have. It's so much better for you to be able to say something like, uh, you know, we have, we have 4,000 followers on our social media channels and uh, we have, you know, we post we post a marketing metric or I'm sorry, marketing um, campaigns uh, and uh, posts daily. And you can find us on these places. That's really, really, really effective rather than saying, oh, we haven't started marketing yet. Right. And then end strong. Always end with an uh, with, with a, a, a clear ending. We're done. Let people know and then move on to the, the, the Q&A. Don't ever end with. Um, well, the worst is when you just kind of fizzle out and I'm OK, that's it. We're done. Like, I'm going to stop talking. No, 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 do not do that. Make sure people know that um, this is the end and then you can ask them if they have any questions. Um, and then understand that you are still in control or you're still on, uh, you know, on until that's over. If it's live, if it's a recording, that's a lot easier, right? It's a lot easier. You don't have to ask for any questions. You can just end with whatever um, your ending is. Uh, an ask is a good ending, uh, but be careful of your ask. So your ask might be something like, follow us on social media give them the social media um but don't ask for something that you don't know that you need or know how to defend like if you're asking for money you have to have all your financials done and you have to be ready to support everything that you've said so be careful asking for that now um so i'm going to end this presentation with follow us on social media thank you so much for your attention here are some some uh, of our primary uh, direct marketing channels. You can reach us on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and uh, you can also follow us on Eventbrite. We do more than, we did more than 120 workshops so far. We have a couple workshops every week. So uh, check us out, follow us, and thank you for your attention. Ba bomb the end, right? So thanks. Uh, if you guys are working on your uh, business idea for one of the classes, uh, the typical progression of assignments on your, for the ideation process, is you start with the bug report, figuring out how to solve problems, move on to the idea napkins. You do just a brief elevator pitch, move on to your uh, customer discovery, start uh, finding those early adopters, and then this is your pitch deck presentation. Bye everyone, we shall see you soon. Take care. And that's truly the end. <laughs>